all part of people's lives. It does not dictate how you're going to live your life. It is not what you take inspiration from to decide where you're going to live or how you're going to raise your children. You already have all of that figured out from the priorities that were laid down for you by colonizing nations. We've already been, in, we've indoctrinated ourselves deep in, the, in this tradition. Now, the, I told you in the beginning of this talk there are two movements. What were they? There was the, the French Revolution. What was the other movement in Europe? The Protestant Reformation, the Protestant movement. And it's really interesting what happened with them, and I, I need you to understand this. The Catholic tradition overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, the idea there is that this world is a terrible place. This world is a curse, really. The human beings will only have happiness where? In heaven. And they, are, they have been sent down to the earth as a punishment from God. So the fact that human beings are miserable in Europe is actually expected. That's how they're supposed to be. Because <laughs> this world is a terrible place. It's a place of misery. The Protestant movement actually reacts to this and develops a new Christianity. And in the new Christianity, the more dunya you acquire, the wealthier you are, the better job you have, the more money you make is an indication that God loves you. The wealthier you are, the more it is proof that God loves you. So they are actually diametrically opposed philosophically to the Catholic tradition. You with me so far? So if you go to like the deep south of the United States, where like two-thirds of the radio stations are Christian, and you listen for a good hour to a Christian talk, you know, talk show or a preacher, I want you to go get that job, because Jesus wants you to get that promotion. That nice car, that is Jesus loving you. You know, you will find the wealthiest people are actually preachers. They're extremely wealthy and they were incredibly expensive clothes and things like that. And they say, this is what Jesus does, you see? You know, so the idea is that you come to religion for what? Why do you need religion now? Because it will further your materialism. I'm not using the word for the first time now, materialism. When you, when you concern yourself with the universe instead of God, that is materialism. When you concern yourself with the body as opposed to what? The soul, that is materialism. When you concern yourself with this life over the next life, what is that? Materialism. Modern Christianity became a way to justify materialism. To further materialism. And Muslims were not too far behind. When do Muslims really get happy for each other and celebrate and do some ibadah? Even the Muslim that doesn't pray, doesn't even come to Jumu'ah, when he buys a new house, he has an Amin at his house. Yes or no? Why? Because this is, Allah has really blessed me. Allah has blessed me. This is, must be a sign that Allah is happy with me. The more dunya you acquire, the more is an indication that Allah is happy with you. This twisted idea even took over much of the Muslim world. And of course, we have the opposite reaction. This dunya is horrible. This dunya is evil, it's corrupt. Now in the middle of all of this, what I just wanted to share with you is what the Qur'an does. And this is a long like, philosophical lecture, but I'm going to take you five minutes. Just, I, I want to drop a seed. Maybe if we get a chance to talk about this tomorrow, I'll exp expound on this tomorrow. But at least just one idea I want to give you, inshallah. The spirituality, spirituality, you know, what will increase your iman, what will increase your taqwa? Spirituality in modern discourse was replaced with psychology. Right? So instead of looking at it as something from the unseen, we want to figure it out from the scene. So if you're depressed, it may not have anything to do with spirituality. It must be some chemical imbalance in your body. Take some pills. You'll be fine. Right? So we even take the, the emotional states of human beings and we're trying to find, for, for problems of the unseen, we're trying to find solutions in the scene. Right? And it's destroying humanity. Suicide rates are higher than ever before in the modern world. And in some of the wealthiest counties in the United States. Right? We're destroying human beings. Now, there is a feeling inside of us, a, a negative emotion called guilt. This negative emotion is called guilt. When does someone feel guilty? when they've done something bad. In modern psychology, guilt is not a good thing. So if somebody comes to a therapist and says, yeah, I took some, 
I drank some alcohol, I got drunk, I feel really guilty. The, the therapist says to him, you need to get rid of your guilt. You need to learn to forgive yourself. Your guilt is something that is a, a kind of a human flaw inside of us because you need to feel happy all the time. You need to feel happy. You need to let go of this negative emotion inside of you. There's too much negativity. Surah Al-Qiyamah begins, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة the, Allah swears by the day of standing, the day of resurrection, and then Allah swears by the person, the nafs inside of us that feels what? Guilt over and over again. The people, the, the individual who feels guilty inside over and over again. Now these two things are actually lazim and malzum. They're tied to each other. What is the relationship between the day of judgment and guilt? Allah is telling us an incredible spiritual and psychological reality. A spiritual and psychological reality. What is that? You know, if you hear an alarm right now, and you hear an announcement, please exit the building, there's a fire in the building. If you heard that, what would you do? You'd exit. The purpose of an alarm is to warn you of a danger. Will you react even if you don't see a fire? Yes. What is enough for you? The alarm that woke you up. Allah created the human being with an innate sense of good. An innate predisposition towards doing the right thing. It's called our fitrah. And when we violate that spiritual programming inside of us, then Allah created a security mechanism inside of us. It is called al-lawm, al-nafsul lawama, guilt. Guilt is a gift from Allah warning you that what you are doing is violating your soul. And when will you see the, you don't see the danger. When you violate your soul, you don't see the danger. When will human beings truly see the danger that they were ignoring? Judgment day. The ultimate proof of judgment day is the psychological sentiment of guilt inside of ourselves. The proof of judgment day is every time you feel guilty, and it's not just Muslims who feel guilty. Every single human being was given the gift of guilt inside of them so they could know when they're doing something wrong this isn't right I don't know I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for this somehow I, something inside me is not sitting well you know kids that are that are breaking into the teacher's desk and they're kind of constantly looking to see if the teacher walks into the class the feeling they have inside of them oh, I'm gonna get caught I'm gonna get caught that loam inside of them and especially when they get caught and they're humiliated all of that is loam Modern psychology cannot discuss this in a positive way. It can't. Because for them, there is no soul. No psychological theory will teach you school. No, no therapist can tell you you have to protect your heart. We, the Muslims, are the only ones. We're the only ones. This is the only book. This prophetic model is the only model. Please listen to this carefully and I'm done. This is the only model that actually finds the balance between the seen world and the unseen world. The Catholics denied the, the unseen. The, the, the Protestants embraced the unseen wholeheartedly. The secularists rejected the unseen entirely. We're the only faith tradition that actually engages with the seen world and through it, it betters the unseen reality. I'll just give you one example of that in, you know, as part of this. And that is that, you know, for Buddhists, they, when they pray, they close their eyes. Or when they, con they meditate, they close their eyes. And you'll notice in many spiritual traditions, people concentrate and meditate for hours and hours with their eyes closed. How do we pray? Eyes open. Now you tell me, if you closed your eyes and prayed, wouldn't it be easier? Honestly, tell me, would it be easier to concentrate if you closed your eyes? It would be, but we don't. We keep our eyes open. Why is that? See, you ever wonder why that is? It's actually a fundamental of this religion. You are supposed to connect with the unseen God, un the unseen Allah, while not losing sight of the fact that you're living in this world. Even in Salah, we don't get to disconnect ourselves from this world entirely. We don't. Why would the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most connected to Allah, why in the world would he shorten his prayer when he hears a child crying? Shouldn't he be so engrossed in prayer that he wouldn't even hear an earthquake, not, let alone a child crying? We, we are not a spiritual people at the expense of living in this life. We have to find that balance between these two things. This balance has to be restored, not just for ourselves, but for all of humanity. 
they have rejected. So many have rejected the religion completely. And as an adverse reaction, so many have become extremists in religion. All of it because we, st we strayed away from the core teachings of this book. La uqsimu bin la uqsimu bin lawama. Subhanallah. I wanted to, I know this is a, a really philosophical, but I at least want to share some of this at this forum with you because Muslims, we have to raise our level of thinking. All of us do. Not just the du'at and the researchers and the speakers. The average Muslim needs to learn to think heavier. I don't want a question and answer session at the end of this. Even if you have questions and answers for them, I'm not going to do one. I just want you to think just on your own. Just, just process things in your head. Where are we now? What, what is the crisis that we're facing? This modernization has made its way inside the masajid. We have to revitalize the faith of Islam from the very core. May Allah Azza wa help us become the ummah that comes back to the essential teachings of this deen and are able to spread them for the benefit of the ummah and for the benefit of humanity at large. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.